We're talking about CK in this video, so stay tuned. Disclaimer. The things I'm going to talk to you about in this video are my opinions, my opinions only, Jonathan Barrientos' opinions. Uh, this is not an Air Force sponsored video. This is just uh, me doing my job and talking about the things I do in my job. Without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jonathan. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. Check out my Instagram. That's where I post the most and that's the easiest way to get a hold of me if you have any questions. Without further ado, let's get started. So what is CCAT? CCAT stands for Critical Care Air Transport Team and it is composed of three members, a critical care doctor, a critical care nurse, and a respiratory therapist. I am a respiratory therapist, a 4-H in the Air Force. I've been in for about six and a half years and I've deployed once uh, CCAT to Germany and I've revalidated two times at CCAT Advance. I just want to talk to you guys about some tips and tricks as well as uh, my experience for validation and my whole CCAT experience as of now. What do we do as CCAT members? We go and pick up patients all around the world and we have teams in Asia, teams down in Europe, in the Middle East, and we go pick up patients that are ICU level, very critical, uh, and we bring them to the next level of care. We use equipment such as ventilators, uh, IV pumps, suction units, uh, monitors, and we also have a lot of inventory for procedure you would do in the ICU. We could do it for the most part. We transport patients in C-17s, uh, tankers, as well as AC-130s, and also different kinds of jets. We just kind of use any kind of airplane available. And we usually fly with the AE crew. Usually they set up all the plane, the products with oxygen as well as with anything else that we need to rearrange in that airplane. So how do you become a CCAT member? As a 4-H, what you gotta do is you have to have your upgrade training done and then you have to be in a CCAT UTC or a CCAT position in your base. Once they have you there, you go to initial, uh, which is a two week course in Ohio. And that's where you do a lot of the initial training. You get to see how the plane works. You usually go with a class of nurses, doctors, and respiratory therapists. Within that class, you split up into teams and then you do simulations as well as inventory, get to play with the equipment, get tested on the equipment as well. Once you graduate CK Initial, you go to CK Advance. And this is in Ohio as well, is in Cincinnati, in University of Cincinnati. When you get to Cincinnati, you're a part of a class of doctor, nurses, and respiratory therapists again, and you get split up into teams. They mix you up, so that way you get to work with different people, and you get to learn how to work as a team. The first week is kind of like a coaching week. You learn how the simulations are going to work at that facility, as well as uh, what your options are, where your equipment is, and everything. You get to learn all that. You do inventory every day. As long as any other thing you need to do, you can stay afterwards and work on the equipment on your own time. Then the second week is whenever you get tested. You usually do simulations, one every day, and you also get tested on the equipment. You have to do it in a timely manner again. They limit you to uh, some scenarios, and then you have to go through the scenario and set up the equipment. At the end of the week, they tell you if, if you validated or not. Once you're all done with those two courses, then you can deploy. You go back to your base, you usually wait for a deployment. We also do humanitarian missions like hurricane relief or any kind of major disaster. With the situation in uh, 2019, we are helping out in civilian hospitals. Uh, they have sent a lot of respiratory therapists and also they've made special transport teams for isolation units. Then it's usually a six month deployment. You go to wherever you get assigned and then you wait for missions. You usually get stationed with a couple teams and you take turns doing missions. Usually you go do a mission. When you come back, you go back to the end of the line and so on. Sometimes you have a lot of teams, so it's, it's easy to have a time in between missions. Sometimes you have very limited amount of teams or members there and you do missions back to back if, if it needs to be. I'm going to post some pictures here of uh, my last deployment last year and just kind of that way you get an idea. Usually what happens is you get alerted for a mission and then you usually you have two kinds of missions. You have the unregulated and the regulated. Unregulated means that you're kind of close to where the accident happened and they pretty much tell you, hey, we need you now. Get on the plane. You go get your equipment ready. You're usually out of the base within like an hour or so. You go pick up your patient, you bring them back. If it's a regulated mission, they usually have time. Uh, they usually tell you, hey, you know, in a couple hours or tomorrow, you, you're gonna have a mission. We need you to transport this patient. And you have time to gather all the information and go pick up the patient. And then that way you already have a plan set up. When you deploy, you also deploy as a team of three, a doctor, a nurse, and a res respiratory therapist. And 
it doesn't have to be exactly from your base. Sometimes they try to put you together from that base, but uh, there are some situations where you don't have enough people in your base and you might meet up with the new team somewhere else. So that's why it's very important to be flexible. So I want to talk to you guys about a couple of tips. So that way you're prepared for CK initial and advanced as well as just CK overall. Tip number one, be flexible. Uh, things change all the time. So you have to be able to adapt just because there's a plan doesn't mean that the plan is going to go according to plan. So always be flexible to work with the team and, and adjust to whatever the situation is. Tip number two, learn the equipment before you go to those places, uh, CK initial and advanced. If your base already has a CK position, they usually have all the equipment for that position. So go and talk to other CK members and play with the SMEAD, the ventilator, the pump, the monitor, as well as the suction unit. Uh, some of the equipment has changed recently, so also look at that, see where the new inventory is. Things are changing all the time, so just make sure you're flexible, like I said, like, that's tip number one, and be ready for all the equipment. Tip number three, bring snacks. Usually missions in real life can be long, especially if you're going from Germany to the Middle East, or Germany to the United States, or within the United States, you could go from California to San Antonio, or from japan to hawaii or something like that so missions are very long bring snacks they usually have some food on the plane but it's like peanut butter jelly sandwiches or just chips and stuff like that if you're in a c-17 or a, a big plane they might have some kind of microwave so get to know the plane that you're going to be flying with and that way you can plan accordingly tip number four study the cpgs the cpgs are the guides we use for any kind of trauma or injury, they usually lay everything out. Hey, if it's a head injury, if it's a respiratory failure, if it's a, any kind of injury, they kind of lay, lay out what the expectations are. If you're on a plane and you don't have internet or anything like that, it's good to have it on your iPad or your phone. That way you can look at those CPGs and see what kind of options you have, medication, dosages, things like that. Tip number five, talk to, if you can, talk to the previous CCAT team that's already there and that way you can get an idea of how the missions are and how the pace is at that specific location. Uh, also, you can ask them for specific equipment that you might need. Uh, maybe it's a desert, maybe it's cold, maybe it's summer or winter, and you might need different things. It always gets cold on the plane, so bring like a uh, sweater or anything like that. You could also bring hammocks uh, to be comfortable if you're doing long missions and you don't have a patient or anything like that. You can always uh, use a hammock or some kind of litter to sleep on if there is space. Tip number six. As a respiratory therapist, know your equations. Sometimes uh, you'll have to calculate oxygen consumption and things, and things like that. So before you go to those courses, make sure you know your equations for all your respiratory things. So that way you can plan out your action plan before you see the simulation. That's my experience as a CCA member. I've had nothing bad to say. I've had a good time. I've met some good people. I work with some great teams, as well as I've heard many good things about CCA deployments. It's one of the most rewarding things I've done because you bring people back from wherever they are and take them back to their family. Everyone that I know has liked CCA. Yes, uh, sometimes you have bad days, but overall we've had a positive experience. Maybe someone out there doesn't like it, but hey, I haven't heard it. But hope to see you guys out there. If you have any CCA questions, send them my way. All right, guys. Well, that's it for the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my Instagram. If you have any questions, use my Instagram, email me, put them in the comments below. Well, thank you for watching. See you next time. I've been off for a couple days, so haven't shaved. Eh. <laughs>